jam needs to be less sweet. Roast beef, it's just so good. And like- That's the one thing I didn't make. <laughs> hey guys, today we're gonna make a delicious roast beef sandwich. It's on garlic bread. I think you're gonna love the topping we put on it. Here's all those ingredients. Let's get into it right now. So for the jam that we're gonna make, the onion jam, we use three large sweet onions. We're gonna have a cup of sugar in there, so that's gonna to add to the sweetness. A cup of balsamic vinegar. I'm gonna use a little bit of rosemary. You could use some thyme, some dry thyme, or you just take the herbs out. It'll be great even without it. For the garlic bread, I have these classic New York hard rolls, which isn't really a hard roll, it's a soft roll. Uh, other parts of the country, it would be called a Kaiser roll. These are awesome, but you can use any bread you like. The rest of the ingredients for the garlic bread is Pecorino Romano. That's really nice on garlic bread. Grated garlic, I use about five cloves. Parsley, lots of butter, and three tablespoons of olive oil. I'm using my garlic bread recipe that's on my site. That one, I just used a whole loaf of semolina bread. My wife picks up a lot of the ingredients for me. She went to get the roast beef. She asked the person to shred it. They didn't shred it. So the bottom stack here is they sliced it and not even too thin. The top stack is the shredded. You really want to get roast beef shredded. You know, if you have access to a deli counter, somebody who cut your cut the meat for you, just ask them to do it. It'll make the sandwich better. It gives more air space in it. Instead of like taking four thick pieces of roast beef, you're getting dozens of just ultra thin shaved roast beef. Let's prepare the onion jam first, then we'll do the garlic. It's non-stick pan. You could use a stainless steel pan also. We're gonna heat this up to about medium heat. So I'm just gonna put couple tablespoons of olive oil. And I'm gonna remove any pieces of the onion skin that I got in there. Now, every time you cut up a lot of onions, you always do that, especially when you're trying to rush. And sometimes, you know, you leave not the best parts, but you know, do the best you can. Right here, I probably have about two to two and a half pounds of onions. All right, so we're gonna let these cook for about 15 minutes, maybe, maybe 20. So right here, I have a tray that I lined with foil just to make it a little bit easier cleanup. You don't have to use the foil. And off camera, I sliced my rolls. We'll line them up. When we make our garlic butter, it'll go on top of here. It's been about 10 minutes. You can see they reduced substantially in here. Tiny bit of golden color, not much yet. I turned the heat up a little bit. You know, now I have some color on there. A lot of times you'll see people want no color on it. It's fine this way. I need to speed things up because I want to eat that sandwich. Sugar, I'm going to put in one cup. Really healthy dish we're making. Okay, and then there's a cup of balsamic vinegar. Rosemary. All right, we're just going to mix that in. We got a little bit of uh, pepper and salt. Just a touch of pepper. Okay, and then just a touch of salt, maybe like a pinch. And my heat just went out. So I'm gonna change my heat and we're just gonna let this continue to cook. Now we're gonna let this liquid and the sugar reduce. We're gonna let this concentrate. We'll just cook it until it's fairly thick, fairly sticky, like a jam. For the sake of speeding things up, I moved my stove over here and I have stove number two, okay? Medium low right now. So about a three out of 10. Put that in. You can use extra virgin or regular olive oil for this. You know, you're making a sandwich that you wanna have some strong flavors here. You don't need to use extra virgin. You don't need a bunch of strong flavors to compete with each other, or you can. All right, so I'm gonna do one, two, three tablespoons of olive oil, and then we're gonna put our garlic in. So I have this low, I don't want the garlic to burn or anything, but I wanna be able to make our nice garlic butter and oil here. You don't wanna make garlic bread with just oil. All right, it will be too oily. It won't, it, won't be, it won't be what you're used to. You're never gonna get garlic bread like that from a restaurant. And in fact, most restaurants are gonna be using just butter. But I do think that both of these together give like a really, really nice bite. And when you bite it, you wanna be crunchy on the outside and soft on the inside where the garlic butter juice almost just like comes out of the bread. I hope I explained that correctly. My wife and daughter just left. They were like, what are you making? I was like, look. <laughs> all right, guys, turn this off. They barely have any color on there, no color at all. Take this off the heat and let's get it on the bread. 
If you use salted butter, you don't need any salt. I'm gonna put about a half a teaspoon of salt into my garlic butter. Here's the parsley. I'm gonna use about that much of it. The only thing we're doing differently than the re other recipe that I'm gonna link to is I'm just not using the hot red pepper. If you wanna use that, go for it. I have my oven set to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and keep one rack towards the top of the oven and then you can keep the other one in the middle. I'm gonna put this, just try to distribute it evenly onto all pieces. So we'll do a little bit on each one to start. I'm thinking that's gonna give me a problem. So I'm gonna do the last two in another pan because I don't want it all to pour off. Let's talk about today's sponsor, ButcherBox. I've been getting ButcherBox deliveries for a few months now, and with each one, I am so impressed with the quality and taste of the meat and convenience of the ordering process. With just a few clicks, I can order humanely raised meat, including free-range organic chicken, grass-fed and pasture-raised beef, and pork that's raised crate-free. And it's shipped directly to my door, which gives me back time in my day. Something that I just can't put a price tag on. And for a limited time, they're offering a new deal that they've never done before, free chicken for a year. That's two pounds of free range organic chicken breasts in every order for one year, so you always have chicken when you need it. To make dishes like chicken and eggplant parm, grilled chicken Caesar salad, or chicken with sauteed broccoli rabe. So guys, if you're looking for an easy way to access meat and seafood that's sourced from farmers and fishermen who meet the highest standards for quality, click on the link in the description to get started today. And don't forget to sign up today to get free chicken for a year. And a big thanks to ButcherBox for sponsoring today's video. All right, and then I have Pecorino Romano. I have about three tablespoons here, and I'm just gonna sprinkle it on each. This just makes garlic bread over the top, you know? Typically, this is how places will do it. You know, they'll, some of them will use, you know, parm, but for the most part, it's Pecorino. Pecorino everything, all the time. Go to cook it for about 12, maybe 13 minutes, covered in the middle of the oven. And then remove this cover and then bring it up to the top, you know, like to the second level, right below the broiler. And then watch it the whole time. It's gonna take about two to three minutes broiling it to get it golden, delicious, and still maintain that softness in the bread. And while that bread is cooking, you could just see this right now. We're still waiting for the balsamic, the sugar, just to thicken. So this is getting really, really jammy and uh, still needs, still gonna need a few more minutes. And I just timed it perfectly with the garlic bread. That's how it should look. Ooh, just got blasted by the, by the onions. Those are perfect. It's pretty much there. I wanna show you. So like when I go through here like this, it leaves a streak. Like it doesn't all just come back right away. Now what you can do is you can make this in a day in advance, you can put it in the fridge and it could be cold when you put it on your sandwich or you can have it hot, it's really up to you. The roast beef's not gonna get really hot through right now. It's just gonna get a tiny bit warm, but it's the cheese that we wanna melt. There it is right there. It's like super thick. Just be really careful. When I tell you how good that is, that would be great on any sandwich. Okay, four bottoms right here. Here are the tops from before. Guys, what I meant before about the feel of the garlic bread, so you want it to be like, like look, it's the other, see it really, that goldenness, and it's hard, crunchy on the outside, but look at the softness there when I go like that. See that, completely soft. So you can leave those tops on the side. I'm using one and a quarter pounds here for four sandwiches, for four New York hard rolls. Typically a deli will almost always use a quarter pound of meat for a roll. And normally they'll use a third a pound of meat for a hero, but I'm gonna use about a third a pound for this. I want it to make, make it a little bit bigger than normal. And that's a half a pound of roast beef right here, guys. So I'm not even at the third pound yet, which I'll probably leave that like that. Remember when you're like dealing with it, when it's shredded, it will it'll make it be higher and leave some of that airspace in there. All right. I have a half a pound of mozzarella here, sliced mozzarella. I'm gonna use it all for four sandwiches. So we're gonna have a lot of cheese on here. We're gonna put this in the broiler for a couple minutes just until this cheese melts on top. Um, not gonna get too, the roast beef's not gonna get too hot. This is Boar's Head roast beef, um, well seasoned. Make sure you taste it before you put it on here. If it needs salt, add salt to the sandwich as well, okay? Couple minutes, get this cheese melty.
You want to just take a bite of the jam first before you before you yeah, even sure. eat the sandwich. Mm. What does it taste like? It tastes like caramelized onions. Caramelized onions, but like sweet, much sweeter, yeah, right? What do you think of it? Um, it's good. Yeah, right. I just had it. And I was like, oh, it just tastes like onions and that. And then like, I like swallowed it. It was so sweet. Yeah, this looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> I should start filming your videos. You should, that would be great. Mm, that's phenomenal. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I've heard you say that before. I do say that word phenomenal. I you know, I'm I'm old, James. Yeah. I say I say old words. You're from Long Island. Yeah. That's the most overused yeah, word. Yeah, I, I yeah. What what do you think about it? Well, as I said, it's phenomenal. Very good. What would you do differently? Um, what does it need? Uh, maybe like change the jam a little bit. Change the jam, huh? Okay. Less sweet. Less sweet. It is. Yeah. It is sweet, and I think it's great with the combo of the garlic bread and the cheese. Yeah, maybe more garlic too. More garlic, huh? Yeah. Let me try a bite of this. Yeah, it's really good. Mmm. Can I try? Mm. So, what does it get? But. <laughs> Don't eat the whole thing. <laughs> mm, um, and, really good. And mm. Right? Are you serious? I don't even like roast beef. And I would eat that whole thing. Now you were just saying not as good as the shrimp scampi rolls, right? <laughs> yeah. Tell them. Um, if you guys haven't watched the shrimp, shrimp scampi video, I gave it an 11 out of 10. After the shrimp those. scampi rolls. Yeah, it's gonna get a nine out of 10. Okay, Because thank you. I, I think it needs more garlic. I think the jam needs to be less sweet, but like the roast beef, it's just so good. And like- That's the one thing I didn't make. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll take a nine out of ten. Thank you. Okay. Can I finish it? Of course. Still cooked it well. Thanks.